Hi everyone. All right, so here we are. We are reading our last chapter, which is chapter 30 from Reuben. We, um, behind us here is actually five trees. It looks like one tree, but it's five little trees all together. I call them the raven trees because the ravens love to be there in the morning and they make their beautiful sounds when I walk around. Um, pretty soon I hope to call it the tree fort tree because, because there's like five trees kind of around in a circle. I was hoping to build a platform there and then have a cool tree fort for the kids. All right, our last chapter, feeling pretty emotional. I'm guessing you probably are too. Uh, let's find out what Reuben has to say. Reuben lifted the microphone. Okay, so then they're, they're still at the vigil, okay? Reuben lifted the microphone and pulled it to his lips. The light began to fade. The artificial lights glared into his eye from the sea of the cameras behind, beneath him. He didn't like lights or cameras or people staring, but it seemed like a minor concern now. He opened his mouth to speak, prepared to be startled by the sound of his own words amplified into the city dusk. The police told me we have more than 20,000 people here today. Some have traveled from outside the country to share this moment with us. Arlene and I, <clears throat> his voice cracked slightly and he stopped, blinked, swallowed. We, we never expected anything like this. Pause, breathe. He felt lightheaded and weak. What did he want to say? What needed to be said? Nothing came to his head. What would Trevor want him to say? He opened his mouth and the rest followed easily. The freeway is clogged with thousands more people trying to get here. And I'm told this is going out live. To how many viewers? Millions? How many millions of people am I talking to right now? What made you all care so much? Why is this such a big story? I think I know, and I think you know too. This is our world. Where is the person who can't relate to that? This is our world. It's the only one we've got, and it's so hard to live in, and we care. How can we not care? These are our lives we're talking about. And then a little boy came along and he decided maybe he could change the whole thing. Maybe make it a decent place for everybody to live. Maybe because he was too young and optimistic and inexperienced to know that it couldn't be done. And it looked for a moment like it could work. So just for a moment, all these people who care enough to be here to watch this, just for a minute, you thought the world might really change. And now Trevor is fighting for his life after a senseless, purposeless act of violence. And that's shaken our faith. So now we wonder, right? Now we don't know if it can ever get better or not. But this is my question to all of you. Why are we here asking the question when we could just as easily be answering it? Don't you want a new world? Because it's not just one little boy anymore. Look at all of us. By the time this has been in all the papers and all the magazines and the news, been reported on newscasts all over the world, the 20,000 people who make it, made it here in the city tonight, that's a drop in the bucket. 20 million people could hear what I'm about to say. So here it is. If Trevor touched your life that much, then maybe you need to pay it forward. In his honor, 20 million people paying it forward. In a few months, that will be 60 million people. And then 180 million people. In no time at all, that number would be bigger than the population of the world. Reuben stopped, scratched his head and breathed. He listened for a moment to the echoing silence. I know that sounds kind of mind boggling, but all it really means is that everybody's life would be touched more than once. Three times, six times someone might pay it forward to you every month or two. Some miraculous act of kindness for everybody. It just keeps getting bigger. Before you could even pay it forward, someone would be paying it forward to you again. 
we'd all lose track after a while. We'd all be scrambling around trying to find people to do good for. We'd never know for sure if we'd caught up. If we'd just keep going around. The question I've been asked more than any other, every time I'm interviewed for television, every time someone talks to me on the street, they ask, how come Trevor's idea, oh, sorry, how was Trevor's idea received when the class first heard it? I tell them the truth. I say it was received with an utter lack of respect. It was seen as ridiculous because it requires people to work on the honor system and because they'd all say they'll do kind things for people but in the end people only help themselves because they're selfish and they don't care. They don't follow through, right? People have no honor. He stopped as if expecting the crowd to answer. He paused on the question they'd all come here to explore. The moment felt heavy in the air. Well then, what are you doing here if you don't care? Don't ask me if people will really pay it forward. Tell me, will you? Will each of you really do it? It's your world, so you decide. I'm getting a little overwhelmed here. Me too. I think I need to drink a glass of water and sit down. We're going to have a candlelight march in a few minutes when it's dark. So think about it and join us then. The camera stayed on. Nobody moved. Faces watched him in silence. Applause came up like thunder, spreading down and across the street in all directions, farther than Reuben could see, farther than he knew could be even heard. The whole world applauding Trevor's idea. Reuben recognized Chris's face in the candlelight. Arlene clung tightly to Reuben's hand. It's like this, Chris said. It's not exactly going to be a candlelight march. I mean, everybody got a candle, but maybe 35,000 people here? How are you going to march that many people? I mean, from where to where? The city's full. So they're just going to line the street like they're doing. And you and Arlene are going to go for a walk, you know? They'll open up a path for you to walk right down the middle of the Camino. You come with us, Chris, Arlene said suddenly, grabbing his sleeve. No, no way, I don't just... I don't belong there. The heck you don't. Who do you think told all these people about Trevor? I'm not family though. I'm not family by blood either, Reuben said. She's right, you come along. Two uniformed policemen walked on either side of them. Reuben slipped his arm through Arlene's. Their candles flickered in the still night as they moved forward. The streetlights had not come on. On purpose, he wondered. It didn't seem to matter. On every block, thousands of candles glowed, lighting up the streets like the full moon that would rise momentarily. A thin, dark ribbon stretched ahead, a path down the middle of the street left open for them. Here and there, a hand reached out to lightly touch his shoulder or his sleeve. Round, soft moons on faces shone in the circles of their each candle. A woman reached out and touched Reuben's hand. I will, she said. Then the man beside her said the same. I will. They passed a mounted policeman on a big horse, sitting still and straight, watching. In one hand, he held the reins, in the other, a candle. I will, he said, looking down as they passed. Look, I cry in the classroom when I read a book, and I cry on YouTube reading a book. Okay. It spread like a ripple along the route, echoing 10 and 20 deep like the crowd. The simple words followed them along the path, the simple um, lighting up their passing, one commitment for every candle. Everyone said that they would. That's the end of the book. Okay, so the ending of the book is probably different than you had imagined it might be. We don't hear about Trevor and what happens when he was in critical condition. Um, but what we do know is that this story has actually made a movement. You participated in the global Pay It Forward Day um, by looking online. And now I'm reaching out to you. And I want you to think of three things that you could pay it forward to. Let's, let's create a class or a pod challenge of this. Anyways. Remember, this is a fictional story, okay? 
And I, I hope to see you all in some kind of digital way as we watch the movie together. Bye.